In this video, you will learn what quality assurance in education means. I will outline the general concept of it, some difficulties, some challenges, and, you know, some nuances of this topic. Let's go! Hey everyone, my name is Ilner and I'm an educational consultant and on my channel I usually share some important tricks and concepts for those of you who want to, you know, drive change in education. So if you haven't yet been subscribed to my channel, please do so. So in this video we're going to be discussing a very tricky topic which is quality assurance in education. So quality of education in itself is already a rather, you know, complex and complicated thing. So in one of my previous videos um, I was talking about the concept of quality of education and one of the general, you know, ideas there was that there are different approaches of, you know, defining the quality of education. So if you haven't seen this video just go check it out in the description to this video. But yeah, today we're going to be talking about quality assurance. Well, first of all, let's talk about the definition of quality assurance. So Merriam-Webster dictionary gives us this definition. Quality assurance is a program for the systematic monitoring and evaluation of the various aspects of a project, service or facility to ensure that standards of quality are being met. Sounds pretty clear, doesn't it? So there is an object and it has to meet certain expectations in terms of quality, right? And there is someone who is monitoring and evaluating these objects systematically in order to understand whether this object is good enough or not. So this is called quality assurance. The general idea is quite clear, right? But when it comes to quality assurance in education, you'll see that it's not that simple. Mainly because the very concept of quality in education is not something very clear. I'd like to quote here Alessi, who was saying in one of his articles, I'll put all the references down below, uh, there is need from time to time to visit and review key concepts in education, such as quality and quality assurance. The concept of quality and quality assurance is not easy to define because it, as many other concepts in social science, lies in the perception of the beholder and has different meanings in various contexts. So yeah, how do you define it if people keep telling you that it means different things in the different contexts? Yeah, but yeah, we gotta deal with it somehow. If broadly by quality of education we mean meeting expectations of someone, then what is quality assurance? Well, there are different procedures out there that we all as educators know. These might be something like school rankings or university rankings or maybe some peer reviews or maybe some parent surveys or maybe student surveys or maybe some internal reviews or maybe some audits like, you know, financial, health and safety someone from outside coming to your school or university and checking if everything is correct there. So these kind of things, right? Yeah, all these procedures, all these processes are parts of quality assurance in education in a way. So yeah, let's dive into this topic and try to learn more about this. It's also an important question here. So do you think that, say, schools have to be, you know, checked by someone from outside? Or is it enough for the school to be just self-checking, you know, just reviewing everything from within. So this is an important question every time, you know, and the answer might change in different contexts and different countries. Say in some countries, uh, the schools might be given bigger responsibility in terms of, you know, checking themselves. But uh, in some other countries, the overall system might be centralized and the quality assurance procedures might be all collected in certain bodies or authorities that are responsible for you know checking whether the process is good or not so these criteria of whether it's centralized or decentralized is also one of the criteria of you know trying to understand how quality assurance processes work so you can already tell quality assurance whether it's internal or external centralized or decentralized right now it's getting more clear, isn't it? It is also important to understand that there are, you know, different levels of quality assurance. It can be a school level, a city level, a district level, or maybe country level or international level. Like, for example, here on this picture, you can see quality assurance and school monitoring model of Hong Kong. I took this from one of the articles. Here you can see that there is this 
school level quality assurance procedure first, school self-evaluation processes, then annual report, then school improvement and accountability procedures, then schools develop school plans, then self-evaluate again, then annual report, and this cycle is just going on and on. But at the same time, here you can see that there is the same process going on on the Hong Kong level, on the city level, right? Individual school quality inspection. So at the city level, there is a body, an authority, who goes and, you know, just inspects all the schools, then creates this annual report on quality assurance then it again goes to school improvement and accountability procedures then again it goes to quality assurance inspection and at the same time here you can see there is even you know bigger level of these processes which is international level and here you can see that there is regular visits by international experts and there is this process of reporting of international experts and then you see that all these processes again come back to school improvements and accountability so you can see that quality assurance in education can be you know internal and external it can be centralized or decentralized in a country or a district right plus it can be held in different levels school level maybe district level city level you know regional level or maybe country level or international level so there are you know different different levels and processes and procedures of quality assurance but there is an important question here that we need to ask ourselves who is doing all these i mean yeah who is driving all these uh, quality assurance in education procedures right so every single country is dealing with this function somehow usually every country has a certain body or authority or maybe several authorities and bodies institutions and organizations who are responsible for quality assurance so for example here in russia we got this authority uh, which is called ros obernadzor yeah it's an authority which is given this responsibility of you know checking whether everything is right or not i would say that people tend not to like it mostly because you know all these strict inspections which have their own flaws in a way but we will talk about it a bit later okay so for example yeah here in russia it is rosobrnadzor or maybe in the uk uh it's called ofsted you have probably heard about it and you can name your own authorities and bodies in your own country right because educators usually somehow know all these organizations because you kind of you know just hear the names of these organizations every time you can relatively easily find these you know respective uh, authorities dealing with quality assurance in your countries just go and google there you will see that there are different you know procedures in different countries different authorities and different bodies and different institutions responsible for that function yeah okay so as you can probably tell there is you know a whole bunch of different procedures that these different bodies use to you know assure the quality of education in their particular context so I will now take the example of Ofsted, the British Ofsted, as an example of an authority responsible for the quality assurance procedures. And I will just briefly show, say, the functions of these kind of organizations. So Ofsted has five main functions. And all these functions are at least supposed to lead the country to better you know, quality in schools, so schools improvement. So the very first function of Ofsted in the UK is setting the standards. You know, every school uh, has to know what the standards are, right? What the criteria of good or bad are. So this function is given to Ofsted. The second function of Ofsted in the UK is giving feedback. This is also quite important because, you know, there is this dialogue between the government, which sets these standards, right, and the actual schools. Because the school leaders need to understand whether they are going in the, you know, correct direction, whether what they are doing is matching the priorities or maybe future priorities of the government and those kind of things, you know. So the third function of, you know, quality assurance bodies in different countries is setting the sanctions and rewards for the educational system. So every single uh, educational institution, such as school, a college, a university, whatever, needs to know 
what is going to be if they meet the quality standards or if they do not meet the quality standards, right? So those who cannot meet these standards uh, are afraid of the sanctions and, you know, try to improve. And those who are meeting these standards are happy about it because they get the rewards. The fourth function of Ofsted in the UK as, you know, quality assurance authority is actually collecting the information. I'm pretty much sure that you as an educator have experienced this a lot of times, right? When, you know, some outer um, authority, some organization from outside just makes these endless requests to you and asking for some information about your kids, about your students, about everything that's going on in your school, right? And why are they doing this? Because, at least as it is supposed to work, they are doing this, they are collecting all this information in order to make data-informed policy decisions. And they are also doing it because in this way, by collecting all this information and checking what is changing or not, they are also trying to disseminate the good practices. At least this is the idea behind all these procedures. So the fifth function of Ofsted in the UK is boosting these you know, public accountability processes. Like for example, Ofsted publishes the inspection reports and say parents can decide whether they want to go to a certain school or not. And the schools in turn uh, look at these reports and try to improve themselves in order to keep people coming to them, right? Or well, there is another side of this public accountability when you know, these inspections collect certain information about the school, they can start an early or some extra inspection processes to check additionally a certain school, okay? So, of course, no one likes it, right? And the schools try to improve again in order to avoid all these, you know, extra inspections. People actually hate them, right? Most of the times. So since we even mentioned hatred here, we have to talk about a very important topic. Does it all help to actually improve quality of education? And the short answer here is, well, it depends. Certain scholars emphasize that yes, there is certain positive effect of all these quality assurance procedures. Certain educational institutions do improve because of all these but there is also a negative side of all these procedures as well like for example some schools um, start to focus on some short-term solutions rather than you know aiming for more important things like the future of the kids career development of the kids or maybe developing their you know soft skills or things like that something extracurricular something not focused on preparing for the tasks okay but obviously because of all these procedures quality assurance inspections the schools often find themselves in a position where they have to decide what they will be focusing on, right? And at the end of the day, the kids are those who lose in these particular situations. So yeah, there are definitely negative sides of these procedures as well. So yeah, quality in education is never easy, especially it's not easy when it comes to the practice, right? I mean, it's so, so not easy. Um, I'm seeing this a lot when I'm dealing with schools, some educational institutions, you know, in different levels. And yeah, it's never easy. It's always a matter of, first of all, identifying the expectations of all the outer stakeholders that you got. Then you have to understand your local uh, authorities' expectations or maybe parents' expectations, right? So you have to understand all these quality criteria that are set for you, right? Then on the other hand, you have to understand your inner resources, your values, your skills as a team. You have to understand your own goals, where you want to lead your own educational institution and those kind of things. And then after that, after having understood all these things, you have to very carefully develop a strategy for your institution which would help you to be very good in terms of quality and also at the same time be happy yourself that you are doing the right thing and that your students, your parents, your teachers, your staff are all happy about what's going on in your school. Quality assurance is important and we all should do that because our students and our parents do deserve that. I just tried to briefly outline what quality assurance in education is and if you have any comments, please do comment in the comment section and 
If you want to learn more about this topic and some other topics for the you know, change agents in education, please check the description of this video because there I will leave some more details for those of you who want to develop yourself professionally as educators. So here is my previous video about quality in education. Go check it out to just refresh the concept of quality in education. Do subscribe to my channel if you want to see more content like this. And I'll see you in my next videos. Goodbye.